Hello, everyone. Good evening and good afternoon and good morning to all of you uh, from all over the world. A uh, warm welcome back for all the ones of you who were with us yesterday and a warm welcome to the ones of you who are here for the first day. We are so lucky and blessed that Pakjok Rinpoche will join us today to teach on the Bados. My name is Jesper and I will be the MC for this teaching event. And we have a huge team of volunteers working very hard behind the scenes, uh, keeping us all connected and ensuring that everything is working smoothly. So to begin with, I'd like to take just a few minutes to cover some practical logistical information. Interpretation. So today we have oral interpreters in Chinese, Spanish, Portuguese, Indonesian, Vietnamese, German, French, Nepali, Japanese, and Thai. So please take a moment now to join your language channel. Thank you. All right. So as yesterday, uh, as well as today, we are using Zoom's webinar feature. So because of this, you may notice some small differences from previous Samia Institute online gatherings. If you have a technical question, uh, you can use, please use the Q&A section, the Q&A function, which is below in the screen to ask a question to our support team who will promptly answer your question. Uh, and furthermore, uh, you should know that um, yesterday during the teaching, Rinpoche collected questions and answered uh, uh, many of them in the end. And uh, Rinpoche will uh, also today uh, accept questions. So if you uh, reflect during the first half of the teaching because we will do an intermission. Uh, if you reflect on some questions you might have, you will be able to uh, submit them in the Q&A function during the intermission. I will mention this again when we get to the intermission point, but just so that so that you know. So at this point, we would like to be changed. We would like to change uh, the user level of a random number of uh, of you of the attendees attendees in Zoom, and we're doing this to free up more space for late arriving participants. Um, so if you receive a notification from Zoom uh, asking to change you to panelist, please click OK. Uh, if you are a panelist, you can turn on your video so you can be seen by Rinpoche. All the other features of this teaching will be the same. Uh, also, at this point, I'd like to ask any one of you who do not require translation to kindly consider leaving the webinar and join our YouTube live stream. That way we will be able to free up space for students who do require live interpretation. And the link to the YouTube live stream has been posted in the chat. So uh, let's uh, wait a few minutes in silence while we make the changes for panelists, etc. And I will return shortly.
So thank you for waiting, everyone. So today, Pakja Rinpoche will teach on the Bados. As mentioned just before, Rinpoche will take a short five minute intermission break uh, during the teaching. And during this break, I will share a few important announcements with you on behalf of Samye Institute. And during this intermission break, you will also be able to submit uh, any question you have to Rinpoche in the Q&A function. If you would like to access the root text, A Liberation Upon Hearing, the basis of Rinpoche's teaching today, you can find it in several different translations by following the link posted in the chat. So now, uh, on behalf of all of us gathered here, and for the benefit of uh, all beings, I would like to request to Pakchok Rinpoche, Rinpoche, please turn the wheel of Dharma. Welcome, all brothers and sisters, <clears throat> and everyone. Mm. First, I'd like to give a transmission. And after this, I'm going to begin to explain. All the translators, please you can uh, silent, uh, mute or whatever, so I can uh, do the reading transmission to all of the people participant. Jansim Jogung was a dunder, but the Vela Major was or the Mahana Gadanya Bazam Jerum 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 ตุ๊กตุ๊กบริจิกุสิเรเซเบจุเรเลงอตาจุเรเลเซเบตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊กตุ๊
So, <clears throat> um, this particular liberation of one's hearing is uh, taught by Guru Padma Sambhava, 
precious master. In the Tukdu Parchi Kunse, the 12 manifestation, the manifestation of the uh, Padma Jungne, Guru Rinpoche teach liberation, uh, beings without any uh, great practice. So without much practicing, how to liberate beings. So one of that is actually uh, liberation upon hearing of the Pardo. So <clears throat> uh, the person who read this, definitely you need to have uh, some practice or <clears throat> minimum you have some compassion and have uh, some trust and faith, devotion to the Dharma. And uh, of course, you have different variety practitioner who can read this to the person who is dying, diseasing, whether he is a human being or animal, doesn't matter. When you should read this is the, the beginning of the dying process, and you should start reading. So I, I suggest <coughs> reading on a Tibetan once, then reading on your own languages whichever language they already uh, have a translate in different languages exists. You can read in different languages. Then first you read in a Tibetan and your own languages. Uh, <clears throat> so this, when you're starting reading this to every day, when you're doing uh, say, imagine the person passed away today, then you count for 49 days. So within that 49 days, and you can do it every day. <clears throat> and we have a lot of different try to do benefit to beings, people who pass away. Then Jamukundu Rinpoche saying that this kind of precious text to read to hearing liberation is much more beneficial than things that we do for other people, like butter lamb offering or things. This kind of liberation pounds is very, very effective and very, very beneficial. I mentioned yesterday, good to have liberation upon chakra, the white, the blue chakra, Sanjay Sechik or Lotus Essence Tantra. Dharma pills that usually or me or other Rinpoches usually we give. And uh, reading different Buddha names, Amitabha names is a very important. Now the person is not believer who doesn't believe in a religion like that. The liberation upon wearing is actually beneficial too. Doesn't matter whether the person really believes in or not. And <clears throat> the person he or she or whoever allowed to eat, they want to eat, they, you can actually give them, included animals. Now here they actually talk about you can read it in English, you can say says the substances of poa. What does that mean is Guru Rinpoche taught a few substances that you we put together and now until now we know I'm not able to mate, but I had a plan to mate before. So we have a pill for poa. So people, a family member who never learned poa, so before their dying process or their breath just went off and uh, the mission is to get out. So that pill, you can mix with alcohol and that uh, the liquid, the, the pill, you know, the, the, the dissolve into that alcohol, that you can put it on top of the way the central channel. And actually that is a very, very effective called the, the substances make you the central channel open so you can have a pore without any um, doing so this until now I'm not able to make but I have planning to make this in the future 
when the condition all comes in a right way. So this is what the Guru Jamukun Rumbuchi explaining um, about putting in the top in the head. So now the begins with the three pardo, pardo of death, pardo of dharmata or the luminosity, and pardo of becoming or rebirth. So when you when you read the beginning, this is here Kema Kalde Riji Bhu. Oh noble child of great fortune. So that time you need to say the name. So you can say for an example, Kema uh, this so 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 Kalde Riji Bhu. You know, so you need to add their name. Of the personhood disease. Mayang Zejik Trebenya. Mind will be not distracted. Please listen to me. Jigden Dirnang Chinyikun. Whatever you experiencing in this life here, all of that, Milam Duji Lutin, it's just like a dream. So do not have any attachment. What does mean of uh, you know, when you attach to it, then becomes uh, hooked, you know, attached to it, then your mind could stay. So that's why it's very important, remembering, reminding, it's just a dream, don't attach to it. So reminding them, everything good is impermanent, and everyone going to die in the one one in any other ways. So there's no one going to live forever. So don't attach to it. Dungala Pungshig Rijiku. Accept it and don't make suffering. Don't become suffer. Accept it, my child. So this is the beginning to reminding. A peppering the person who passing to reminding them is not easy because many of us we don't think about impermanence, we don't think about the death, so we know in the back of our mind, but we don't really prepare or we don't really accept. So that's why it's very challenging. So now here it begins Karmar Naglam Nawankam, the VV experience of white, red, and black. So what this actually means is yesterday I said the father, the father's uh, white, mother's is red blood. And when the father comes down, then you some of your thought is disappearing and you see small like a white experiences where the red blood is go move up you experience more red color color more vivid and all the thoughts like, like dissolving when the collapse in your heart then more like a darkness and all the thoughts are going to be you know split split secondly going to be dissolving into it that is what is actually mean karma naglam experiences Reminding the person, you're going to experience this white light, red light, black light. These all are just a, a expression arising from your own mind. Whatever experience you're going through is not something really out there. It's just a reflection of your own mind. So this is the most powerful Imagine in your dream, you had a really terrifying dream. Then somebody remind you, that is your dream. You don't need to be worried about. And that instantly when you notice the fear and the pain, all good to disappear. And you become the conqueror of the dream. Dream no good to conquer you, but you good to conquer the dream. 
just by knowing that is a dream. So that is the reminder that we need to give them. Majik mangang rigipo, O noble child, do not panic and do not have fear of your experiences. So whatever you explain, don't panic and don't have any experiences. So my guru says that how to practice this daily life is actually reminding yourself, oh, now I'm experiencing, oh, now I'm seeing this, oh my, now I'm going through experiences, now this is the, the, this is the recognition. So you need to go through these, uh, uh, reminding yourself these experiences often so you don't want to miss out. You know, it's not going to be exactly experiences, but it's going to be preparing your mind. Like uh, when you need to do racing, running or racing or swimming, or you want to need to win, you need to visualize, you need to imagine the racing, you need to imagine that this tough, you know, corner to, um, you know, uh, to move or to, 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 to drive fast or whatever. You need to visualize that, you know, imagine that. Then next time when you do it, you don't feel panic. You can actually already prepared. So actually, Pardo practice in this kind of practices is one way to practice is actually reminding yourself now and your family members. It's going to happen like that. Don't worry. It's just your experiences. Just to that kind of word is actually very enlightening, very empowering, and very much uh, wisdom arising uh -huh, of the preparation. This is one way to practice. Now here is this Thadda Rigpa Jaldawan, meaning that this moment when you have this collapse of the white and the red, the, the, these uh, uh, bindus, the father, the father of blood and the mother's blood collapse in your heart, your mind completely dissolve. Then meaning that moment, you're going to have a kind of experience of like fainting. But the experiencing could be dissolved into mind, mind non-dual thought could be dissolved into space. So you're going to experience instantly like open space. Chinang, namlang kadang means like, like an open space. It's like a completely uh, vast, short moment. That moment, that moment, you're going to have an experience of recognition, like very vivid, very clear, um, hot free awakeness, that kind of very sharp moment. And that example is the inner experience, like a candle in the vase, meaning it's a vivid, like a clarity. <clears throat> Salam metoxygene. The what is it really going to be? It's a clear and non-thought, non-thought awakefulness going to be experienced. It's going to be so short. Depend this kind of experiences is a depend on now. Now your life you're meditating. You can maintain. Two second, your experience is going to be two second. You can maintain for five second. This experience could be five second. Now you can stay half and half a minute, thirty second, and that kind of the uh, the experience of the uh, um, uh, the uh, the part of death is actually going to be 30 seconds of experiences. So when you have total free awakening like that, 
Dini Kiwi Vasalte. This is the luminosity of death. This is the the Buddha's wisdom. This is the the Buddha nature. So Sangi Gongba Digaram. That is the realization of the Buddha. That is the Buddha. That is what Buddha realized. Maju Male Shuparsho. Guru Rambuji said, rest easily, rest easily, without any, you know, like uh, without any clinging, without any changing. You just rest ease. So this is actually the meditation of uh, Mahamuda recognition or Dzogchen recognition or emptiness recognition. These three middle way recognition, emptiness, Mahamuda, ordinary mind, and Dzogchen Rigpa, basically these three meditation need to be meditated without any uncontrived, without any clinging. Doesn't matter which ground, middle way, path, Mahamuda, fruition, Dzogchen. These three Vipachana meditation that normally uh, we teach in, in the Tibetan Buddhism. In Vajrayana. So this is basically the key is this Manchu Male Shukparsho. Uncontrived, without any clinging, without any focus, rest easily. Easily. That is what Guru Rinpoche is giving us the you know, <laughs> instruction. So we say the moment the part of death, we're going to experience mother and the child experiencing. This is what the expression. So when you go through this uh, experience of the death, the, 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 the exhaustion, longer version of the pardo, they're going to explain you how the elements ex dissolving, how each element dissolving, how is the process of the body, the, the fire, the earth, the water, the wind, the mind. This is the longer version. But here, Guru Rinpoche give you the pit instruction, the shorter version, that's the, the more pithy. So Guru Rinpoche says the experience in the mind, when the mind dissolving to the space, you're going to have that. When the space dissolving into luminosity, you're going to experience clear, clear open clarity. That moment the clarity is the mother. Now you recognize that and you can maintain without any uncontrived and that, without any uncontrived, is we call child, the recognition. The experiencing of non-thought, experiencing space and luminosity through your death, is we call mother. You, you knowingly maintaining without any uncontrived, actually we say is a child. So you don't have no separation. You actually resting a uh, uh, thought free awakefulness way in the experiences is we call the mother child uni unity. And that actually we call Dharma Kaya liberation. Uh -huh. That's why here, Chukur Tulu Rijipo, you're going to be enlightened or you're going to be liberated in Dharma Kaya. So the part of death, part of uh, uh, luminosity uh, and the part of becoming is the experiencing of three Buddhas. Part of death is Dharmakaya Buddha. Part of luminosity is Sambhavakaya Buddha. Part of becoming or rebirthing in Nirmanakaya Buddha. So we actually experiencing three Buddhas blessings, three Buddhas experiencing. And the question is, why is like that? Because our nature, our nature of mind, the wisdom, is not separated from us. We can experience it in daily life, sometimes very short glimpses, sometimes in the dream, but we don't recognize. That's why Kyabjo Trugu Ujjian Rambuche says that in this world, how important Garab Durji, Minzushiri Mitra, 
Karabdu Jiri Sahib, Shri Singha. Just for example, like Guru Rinpoche, Bimana Mitra, and all the our lineage masters, without their instruction, no one can realize by yourself because we do experience in life, but we don't have no clue that is the nature and that is the unchanging Buddha nature. So, because of our nature is a Dharmakaya, an expression, the quality is Sambhubakaya, and the, the manifestation, you know, the emotions, the whatever, the thoughts is Nirmanakaya, potential. So, because of our nature is that, so the moment of the death is the expression of Dharmakaya, seeing all the Buddhas is Sambhubakaya expression, then our mind more grossly you know, arising is becoming. This all uh, because of our nature is like that. That's what we're experiencing like that. So liberation upon hearing is not about someone, some Buddha writing something to people to hear that what we know we are not. Actually, we are inseparable from Tirikaya Buddha. We do experiences Tirikaya Buddha in daily life, very here, small here, small there, but we have no recognition. In the death, we experience Buddha, but we never experience, we never recognize, realize. The liberation of our hearing meaning getting the pointing out, letting the person know the experiencing is like this, like this, like this. This is Dharmakaya. Like this, like this, like this. This is Sambhubakaya. Like this, like this. This is Nirmanakaya. It's just so giving, pointing out, helping the being of the experience, holding in the hand and helping the pathway into recognition. So this is the, the first part of the pardo, the pardo of the death. Now, the person maintaining the samadhi, the pardo of luminosity, maintains the meditation, then you can just keep quiet. You don't need to disturb the person. But the person is not meditated, maintained, then you should read the second pardo, the pardo of Dharma Datu or pardo of luminosity. So generally, you can read all that. Normally, animals or human being, anybody die. You can read this every day until 49 days. So second part is called Kyama Kalte Rikipo, a least noble child, great fortune. So, like uh, here again, you add Kyama and you add the name and noble child. Maying Sejik Trembanyan, please listen to me carefully. They say that one of my gurus said, to really to benefit the person who died, you need to have a compassion. Your compassion is going to be no savior mentality compassion, like I'm reading this to save you. No, please don't do this. Because you're reading this to benefit the beings, but the person has have their own karma. So whatever experience they're going through is not my fault all the time or not fault of others but is there his own karma going through these experiences. But we do our best to practice, help, and spiritually and uh, mundanely to help how much we can. But don't take ownership or, or a severe 
mentality. That I don't think so is a, a helpful compassion. Karsang Rigba Mumasin. Before, like day, yesterday, you do not have recognition. Tani Shak Dun Sunjela. Now from now, you every every one week, every day. Nangwa Tamji Jawi said, you're going to see appearances of light, rainbows, and all the very bright vivid experiences. Here the word of seven days is not the seven days of the day of our lifetime. When the sun rise, the sun set one day. No, it's not like that. These days here that I mentioned yesterday, this day is the day of how much you can maintain your practice. You can maintain the practice with the three second without a distraction, and that is become a day in the pardo of becoming, a pardo of the, uh, luminosity. So that's why practice meditation is so important, especially emptiness and Mahamudra or Dzogchen, one of that. Now it's so important to practice every day to have your, our mind to be more, uh, can maintain without any distraction because that actually benefit us for our Pardo experiences. So, Kegle Laku Nambashar. Your Guru experiences different Buddhas, especially peaceful Buddhas. Kamji Ringa Jawai. All the experiences, the first is the five Buddhas, peaceful Buddhas. Hi, peaceful Buddhas, you could experience one by one, the peaceful one. The time of the seeing of the Buddha is how long you can maintain in the samadhi, in the meditation, without distraction for one second, two seconds, three seconds, thirty seconds, one minute. That is the moment of the Buddhas you, you could see. Yishi Thakki Chunruin, that is the expression of your own, your own nature. You're going to see the light are really strong. Do not have any uh, panic or fear towards the light. The experiences is just the light is all expression of your nature. You need to remember that. But then the key point is, when you see this very clear light, you know, white light, red light, yellow light, whatever light, they always have together dim light. Together with the bright light, they have one dim light, small light. The dim light is more desiring to us. Do not attach to the dim light because the dim light is a light of samsara. The bright light, the light of the Buddhas, your own nature. So do not attach to dim light, but see the bright light is expression from your nature. Because the dim five color light is the expression of your five negative thoughts and emotions. So anger, jealousy, pride, attachment, and ignorance. Your appearances, your, what you're experiencing. Tagdam, mata, lamsharvi. You could see some pure and some impure paths. 
Lamki Tamka Manurva do not have any wrong choose the wrong way. Renga Yavyum Tugane the five male and female Buddha's heart Dorji Simbi Singamche the secret path of the Buddha's heart was hit in your high eye the seeing the, the clear light, the white light, the clear light. That secret light Uji Bugu Milasu, the clear light could hit in your own expression, your own experience of your eye. Rigba Linjin Nebete, when you experience that light and you need to let go, do not have any attachment and supplicate to the Buddha, O oh Buddha, please look upon me through your great compassion. Please look up upon compassion to me. From your heart center, from your deep down core, you supplicate to the Buddha. So you and the deity, you're not going to see any separation. That moment, that time, do not abandon yourself or do not take too close to the Buddha, or do not give up the Buddha, take yourself in a close to you. Whether your ego and the Buddha do not abandon anything, this abandoning or this to take, just rest ease, supplicate, see yourself, the Buddha, not separate, then just rest ease. And this is, when you do this, they say, Flala, Flatimne, I'm looking at page. Um, and they have no number, but uh, uh, I'm looking page 17, I think. In the when you look at the yeah, they say, Lala Latimne, meaning you could dissolve into the uh, Buddha dissolve to you, and that time, long ju zugu towards you, you're going to be liberated in the Sambhubakaya uh, realm, so you could liberate that moment. Now this is the the beginning of the peaceful Buddha. It's much easier for us to practice. Now the wrathful Buddha, my gurus, they all say that it's much difficult because the the wrathful Buddhas, the the sound, the, the light, and it's going to be much more uh, difficult for normal people. But we can actually train now see the Rathva Buddhas and not separate from you. That's why the, when you see, I don't know, many of you practice Honro, they feel limited in practice. You can see that Vajrayana practice of Honro, they feel limited in practice. All the Buddhas, all the Gurus could going to dissolve to you, right? So the, we actually learning from the beginning how we can experience this pardo of uh, Dharmata, Ardo of luminosity, when we going to see the Buddhas, peaceful, wrathful, different type of Buddhas, you know, like glimpsesly, when we experience this, we can actually dissolve to us without any fear. So this is a Vajrayana way of practicing to the students. Now, what happened is, when your person is not non-practitioners, so what we can tell them, when you experience this light, don't choose the dim light. Choose the bright light and say, don't have any fear. Everything's your experiences. And think about where you're going to uh, choose the right way. People who believe in a past life, a future life, now you need to focus to where you want to rebirth in the positive life, something like that. But the Buddhist is easy because Buddhist practitioners, we can tell them directly. So right now it's needed, you need to dissolve to you. Don't worry, just let it be, you know. That's why learning the Dharma correctly, I think is very crucial. After you really look at the detail in the Pardo, you can see that the practicing and the teachings of the how crucial comes up into our experiences of Pardo. Now, the person is very new, Buddhist. So we can say, okay, whatever experience you have, 
don't be fear just dissolve into dissolve to you or you dissolve to the buddha or you can say not dissolving just when you see the buddha just take refuge just bow and take refuge that is enough is enough so I just suggesting uh, non buddhist buddhist young buddhist old buddhist you know young old meaning that the the person who doesn't practice a little longer or not you know this can familiarize not age wise but the familiarizing now here the part of dhammata or part of luminosity the seeing the experiences have two kinds one is the peaceful now peaceful chance is gone now we begins wrathful jema karde reki pu o my noble child what such a such such noble child listen kalde twitter man no you not liberate at that moment tuma churjang tawanju time is not changing but your experiences is changing now the begins the wrathful experiences is going to be terrifying choksam tingo tamjikun jae mepung all the ten direction you experiences up and down you're going to see lights fire and thunders the great heroga palchen thaktong thakso tham the great heroga rathful buddhas going to be appear they're going to hold hand different types of weapons in a very scary looking Chonja, no way, chabreshing. You can you can see how many weapons they're holding in their hand. The the sound of hung or pe is going to be like shaking the whole experiences. It's like a hundred loudspeaker going up hung and pe. Barve namro chiranta. You go to see the fierce blazing experiences. but don't be, don't have any fear and panic hela mata mangewa so what is actually teaching we are what we teaching them is to anybody whether is buddhist or non buddhist you can say whatever terrifying you experiencing don't worry don't scared is all your own experiences hamji rang di rikzardo everything is a manifestation or expression of your own nature ngu song ta ju rang bo xian now this three point here ngu song be certain of this and the rest naturally is english in two uh word in tibetan we have three words ngu song recognize ta ju decisive rang bo xiu rest is meaning this three point is the three point of a meditation when you do emptiness meditation mahamudra meditation dzogchen meditation first you need to recognize then you need to be decisive whatever you recognize then you need to rest ease so this this three point is quite crucial so many of students says rumboche for the show many of you wanting to meditate now so i just want to let you know in the future whoever doing emptiness and mahamudra and dzogchen you need to learn correct pith teachings pith instruction teachings from your guru how the experience is what is going to be emptiness is what is going to be rigpa what is going to be the ordinary mind is so that first you need to understand that is a muzu meaning to recognize first you understand can you meditate then through your meditation you need to recognize actual meaning decisive many of the practitioner these days you have not good decisiveness that's why my guru yeshu kenro boche says when you practicing vajra sadva in honro preliminary practice when you have experiences of cleansing the bad karma you need to have decisive in your heart say now this moment my old bad karma and my wrong doing 
is completely clean. It's clean, like that kind of decisive. But I know many of you, you're not doing this. Please start doing this because it's going to be benefit for your meditation after. That is called takcha, meaning decisive. After you have this decisive quality, rangbab show meaning rest ease naturally, so without any contrive or without any clinging, resting. So these kind of teachings you need to get from your guru, then you need to meditate correctly, you need to accumulate good habits, meaning accumulation merit. Accumulate merit, nowadays I like to say from yesterday, accumulate habits. Merit meaning habits, good habits, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, dhimpa to la So your mind have a completely aware, then you, you dissolve the, the wrathful deity to yourself and yourself and wrathful deity in, inseparably, then your rest is. So we're doing this practice in Guru Yoga, we practice this in a, a Vondro, Vajasadva, Mandala, especially in Guru Yoga, we do this. So now you can see how many important teachings with instructions that we learn so many times is going to be effective in our Pardo and daily lives. One thing I want to say to all of you, as a practitioner, yesterday I said, many of us are we are follower, but we are not practitioner. So how to become practitioner is you need to understand through experiences. The most important experiences that I want to highlight now is when your mind, state of mind is stable, your experiences of what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you emotionally uh, and the feeling and expression, all going to be different. When your mind are more happy, more joyful, more sort of uh, calm, and all the experiences are going to be different. That is, this, this kind of, this key points is very important for practitioner, for non-practitioner, for a beginning, for advanced practitioner, very important, crucial, because that makes us understand and make familiarize all the experiences we go through is a the really expression, the projector. The projector is, is my mind. The movie that I creating right now, today, the movie going to be a good movie or bad movie, the, the, the projector, the director, the who's creating the projection of the movie is actually my mind. When you have that experiences often, you're not going to be lazy in practice. You're going to be very much vibrant in your practice. You're going to have much more experiences, really wise experiences in your life. And you can actually benefit other people much more. Mind is happy. Your mind is, you can make yourself happy. You can help other people to be happy. When your mind can help you help your mind to transform from negative to positive and help to really recognize the every experiences in your mind through your experiences, then you can actually help other people to see this way. When you can see your own mind, nature, and have completely, genuinely, uh, correctly uh, following the path, you can actually benefit in the future to other people to see and recognize their nature. So after all, to benefiting beings and upholding Dharma is just in our own mind. You can benefit your own mind means you're benefiting the beings. You benefit, you're transforming your own mind, 
means you're upholding the Dharma. Now you cannot benefit your own mind, means you can benefit few things to other people, but you really cannot help their mind to be happy. When you cannot transform your own mind, you cannot help other people transform really genuinely. You can advise somebody and then somebody says, oh, it really helped me a lot. But you can see that you cannot really go into the core of the person because you didn't experience your own core. So that's why it's very important to remember of this. So I'm going to break here in the pardo of death is finished and the pardo of the luminosity is just finished and we could have short break here. Thank you, Rinpochala. So during this short break, uh, we have a few uh, announcements to share with you all, uh, as well as mentioning to you that you have the uh, option of submitting questions for Rinpochala regarding this teaching. And you can submit your question in the Q&A function and uh, thereby uh, send it to us, and we will pass these on during the end of the teaching. So, um, uh, many of you were here yesterday as well. So today, the, the announcement uh, section will be more, uh, slightly more concise than yesterday. Um, and uh, we will also include today further information on the Sukhavati retreat in Samye Bali. As mentioned yesterday, Pakjok Rinpoche will return to Cooperstown, New York this September to Samye Hermitage, New York. Rinpoche will begin by leading a Sukhavati retreat, during which he will offer teachings on Powa and practices to establish a connection with Buddha Amitabha's pure realm of Sukhavati. Following this, there will be a Mahamudra retreat based upon Chakyamuni Buddha's teachings on the perfection of wisdom, as contained within the Praja Paramita Sutra in 8,000 lines. Space is limited for these retreats, and you can learn more about Rinpoche's retreats and schedule by scanning the QR code or clicking on the link shared in the chat. We are also very delighted to share that Pakcha Rinpoche will be visiting our Sami Hermitage Bali Retreat Center in October to offer a retreat on the blissful, pure realm of Buddha Amitabha Sukhavati. For the first time, Rinpoche will bestow a combination of three special instructions with the associated precious reading transmissions as well. The Seed Tantra, Only Child of All Buddhas, or Sangye Sheshik, is one of the most important liberation texts in the Sokshin tradition. Retreatants will receive teachings and transmissions for reciting this text, which liberates upon hearing and wearing. The practice of poa or transference of consciousness at the time of death, the swift path that guarantees freedom from samsaric states. Retreatants will be provided teachings, transmissions, and conditions to read the sign, to receive the sign of accomplishing the poa practice during the retreat itself. And the concise Amitabha breathing practice taught by Guru Rinpoche, a profound yet simple visualization practice to be done before sleeping. Retreatants will learn this simple, profound breathing visualization practice in separability with Amit Amitabha Buddha through breathing. Due to limited space, we encourage you to register very soon to secure your spot. This retreat will not be live streamed and will only be available to in-person attendees. And we particularly encourage our Buddhist Sangha throughout Asia to join this very special retreat. Currently, oral interpretation will be offered in Chinese, Indonesian, and Vietnamese. To learn more about this exceptional opportunity at Samye Bali, please visit our website by scanning the QR code or following the link posted in the chat. We can only provide such detailed live translations of these events due to the 
vast generosity of our supporting patrons. If you would like to show respect and appreciation for our interpreters, please do so by scanning the code or following the link posted in the chat. And finally, I'm very pleased to share that Samie Institute would like to offer a free month's Vajrayana membership to all those participating in today's teachings. When you join Samye Institute's Vajrayana membership, you will, in, you will receive unique monthly recorded teachings from Pakjok Rinpoche and Samye's learned Drublas and Kempos. The Vajrayana membership provides students with instructions in key Vajrayana principles and practical guidance on performing core sadhanas of the Cholin Tersa. Recently, we released full-length recordings of some of Pakjok Rinpoche's recent teachings including his profound Mahayoga teachings on the Yangtig Yeshe Sangtal and the liberation upon hearing. By joining, you can hear Rinpoche's teachings on the Lotus Essence Tantra and detailed explanations of the unique Vajrayana approach to ground, path, and fruition. And due to the Vajrayana Samayas, these videos are not available to the general public. At present, these teachings are only available in English. You can learn more by scanning the code or following the link in the chat. Samia Institute also offers an extensive library of teachings in our holistic living pathway for those who are curious about exploring Buddhist approaches to key topics such as happiness and dignity. And for those interested in study and practice, we encourage you to explore the many video teachings and course offerings in our nine yanas, and path of meditation pathways. Here you can engage in self-paced learning and reflection, and our instructors are happy to support you in your exploration. So we will, um, that's it for the announcements, uh, and uh, we will uh, remain in, in break for a few minutes. So there is time to submit any questions you might have for Rinpoche in the Q&A function. And uh, we will resume in a, in a few minutes with the teaching. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Welcome back. Now, after the seven days, uh, you can actually start reading this, the third part though. But actually, I can say that you should read this third one every time. Basically, read the whole thing. When the person pass away, moment, you just read the whole thing. Now we third part do. Kema nyonje riji po. Meaning, uh, noble child. Now that time you say the name of the person who disease. Maying, maying, temba, ten. Don't be disturbed. Your mind distracted. Please focus to me. Now your body and your separate your body and your mind separated. So you're going to have a body of your mind. Not the physical body, but you're going to have the your the body of your mind. Siba Pardo So now is the experiencing of called the Pardo of becoming. So so uh, like existing so you could become ex you know experiencing of uh, this kind of like dream life so that time chi wara xie xing sun la sheng so you going to notice in the first of course no but after you going to notice that you are dead but now your mind is uh, have attachment or yawning or you no know, attached to it to life now is the the death of the lot of the death, you know, or the many different spirits going to uh, come. Jigbe nyambe tang. What it means when you have that kind of uh, body and spirit and mind and separated? What happened is uh, when the body and mind separate, what happened, that mind does not have very steady level. For example. When you meditate, when you're resting, you know, like doing meditation, you cannot actually stay, you know, in one place in a meditation state. Right away, our mind is like distracted, right? So our actually body is in the meditation position, but our mind is everywhere. So that is the, uh, how our mind easily uh, go anywhere. When the pardo beings, when you don't have the body and they have only mind, the mind is very fast. So it goes everywhere. That is number one. Second, they they going to see different spirit, different pardo beings, part other beings, you know, they, they but they're gonna have different different beings they're gonna see. And uh not only that, they're gonna start seeing um they call jig bedra, uh, the terrifying sound, uh, four element sound, earth, fire, um, uh, wind, and uh, water. Nyam tongue, meaning five, our poisons, our three poisons. We would see different experiences in these uh, pardo beings. Ngedang, mange tamang sha means it's not going to be have exactly this kind of experiences you're going to have but you're going to have different type of experiences you can check your own mind now you can check you see yourself how many uh, each second how much your thought arises thought goes off how much changings like that in the pardo being your mind looking things and seeing things other beings but the pardo being have one good quality or one quality they can actually have a similar um, some um, power to see through, so they can see other people's mind. Yeah? There's some people say, Rinpoche, in the Pardo being, uh, people who die in a very uh, tragic uh, death or a vegetable state or coma or like that, when the physical body and the mind is already separated, the mind not going to be experiencing coma. Mm? Mind going to be completely sharp, sharp um, experiences. Until the body and the mind are going to be together, then the mind, mind can be stay in a coma or vegetative state, possible. But when the body and the mind separated, then that time it, the experiences of a vegetable, a vegetative state not going to be there. It's going to be completely sharp. 
And with that, what language we should pray? When in the Pardo being, they could know things, they can see things. They're not going to be stuck with one languages or one this languages or that languages. They can have many, many level of knowings. So they can see mind through. They can see, they can see what you're thinking about it. So that's why sometimes you don't need to worry too much about languages too. So whatever you're experiencing right now is all I ex, 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 experience of your mind. Your mind is, is a space and have luminosity, thought-free awakeness. So namke namka So whatever you're experiencing is experience of mind. Mind is like a space. Space cannot destroy space. So you need to have a guts in your mind. You need to have a little bit of dignifying. Because of that reason, your mind is space, experience is, is, is part of the mind. So space does not affect space. That's why you need to have guts and dignity in your mind. Now, what happened is with the Pardo beings, when they pass away, you need to, uh, when you want to give them some food, they only cannot, they cannot eat the real food. They only smell it. So when you dedicate the smell, the food to the part of being, and they can receive it without you dedicating them, they cannot receive it. So that's why um, right now our Samya Institute, we have a part of prayer. So um, some family members, when you die, so we have a monk who can do everyday smoke uh, offering, everyday for 49 days. So they actually dedicate for the person who disease. And the prayer no need to be always in your country or some other country because of the best is, of course, wherever you die, the person is there doing smoke offering is the best. But then we don't have that kind of, a, uh, uh, you know, like a, uh, uh, choices, then one of the monks in Nepal or some other places, they can pray to practitioners, they can actually do this uh, smoke uh, offerings for like disease. I think it's very, very important. So here the Guru Rinpoche said, Chinji labi surungode. Chinji laba meaning the bless. Surungo meaning the smoke offering. So what I bless the smoke and dedicate form is dedicated to, for the disease. Seme shebe longjode is endless uh, offering for you. Sangme nyangdoro shasede, please enjoy without any attachment. Enjoy the offering. She she sunla mahingwa, please take the offering without any attachment and do not attach to the life. People with life. Do not attach for the life. You take the offering and don't attach to it. And you're reminding them. After you give the offering, then we always remind them. So now they are sort of coming for eating. At that time, we have a small, you know, small ritual item and we call ting shak. So called ting, ting, ting. That time all the Pardo beings could come and we offer the smoke and which is uh, 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 some special mantra we chant, then we giving the offering, you know. And that time then we they all coming and they take the offering. And that time we give them teaching. Mm. Mm. Dumba, Sladang Lama, now your mind, your, your faith, your devotion, your focus could be the Buddhas and your Gurus. Now the person don't have no Buddha, no Gurus, then you need, you need to tell them, focus your compassion or focus your good deed or something like that. But you have a Buddhist, then you say, focus your Amitabha Buddha, focus your Guru. Tene Nupchi Chorona, from here to the west side. They have a Sukhavati, the blissful place. In that place, they want Buddha called Amitabha Buddha, endless light. 
Sushil Tei Tenzinba, whoever remembered his name, Tene Teru Kevaju, whoever remember his name, you're going to rebirth to that blissful uh, uh, Sukhawati, the pure land. Chujang Gumbo Tei Sen, because of that reason, the Amitabha Buddha make aspiration. Now you remember the name of the Amitabha and Hila Sung Nen Sohato, hold in your heart and supplicate the Buddha. So that is like reminding of the disease. In Vajrayana teachings, we like to focus Amitabha Buddha that I mentioned yesterday, because Amitabha Buddha is the one of the easiest to rebirth, and because of Amitabha's aspiration, so that's why it's much easier to uh, than other pure land. Jiri Zigdang Pemanjo, think of Avalokiteshwara, Compassion Bodhisattva, remember Guru Padma Sambhava, Keno Nyamdu Muguki. Please think of me, Avalokiteshwara, think of me, Guru Rinpoche, think of me. So you gain, you try to have supplication. Tisum Mebe Nanyine, do not doubt, don't, do not doubt, no doubt. Without any doubt, you have that supplication, that moment. Rangjung Dorji Dragosun, that moment you're going to uh, reborn. Hingam Teru Bimbo, you're going to reborn to the dead pure land. In the lotus, Zuti Yudukya, instantly you're going to reborn in the lotus. Techir Gajitovenga, because of that reason, be happy, be joyful. Temu Kijirikibu, because of happy and joyful, now is the time to supplicate. Keep the Amitabha in your heart, Avalokiteshwara in your heart, Guru Rinpoche in your heart. Now it's time to supplicate. So you're sort of reminding again and again. So this is the, you know, really, this is the part of the really, like the biggest gift you can give to uh, people who disease. Now, um, I said yesterday, like, for example, you really love your mother, your grandmother, whoever family member you have. What you can do is you say, oh, Rinpoche, uh, or father, mother, whoever this is, I'm going to chant 100,000 specific mantras and dedicate to whole sentient being, specifically, um, generally all sentient beings, specifically for my father or my mother or my brother or my sister or my friend or the, my animal dogs or whatever. When you have this physical body, uh, your experiences of the bardo is very similar. So animals, I'm not sure, but definitely I think it's very similar experiences. But I think it would be much more um, uh, dullness because animal body is very dullness, not sharpness as a, I'm a, I'm a dharma point of view. Of course, some animals have much more intelligence than human being, but I'm not talking about intelligence. I'm talking about Dharma experiences. It's going to be much, much difficult. So in the future, you can, we can have some specific Buddha who can teach to different animals. Then it's different situations. But right now, I just think the human realm is much more experiences, but animal, I think that they do experiences pardo, but can be a little different. I'm not sure, really sure on that. Now, the, the, the part of, now the first part is the Dharmakaya, pardo of death. Second is Sambhubakaya to recognize the Buddhas. Now that we that lost chance. Third one, now we're experiencing everything and now we're, Somebody give us uh, to eat. Then we saw the Amitabha Buddha. Now we return to Amitabha Buddha. So that is Nirmana Gaya Buddha's Pardo experiences. Now I lost the chance to. So what happens? Again, listen, my, uh, this is this name. Listen here. So you need to learn to block to rebirth not to rebirth. So Guru Rinpoche say that you need to visualize to not to birth, you know, to the samsara. Now, I, I'm not able to block it, you know. So now, my karma is pushing me to rebirth. 
So I could see experiences dong dum do pu mun zhe dang. Like uh, I see a tree trunk or hello or dark cover forest or something like that. Or naksal shayen kantona. Or I can see beautiful house or something. Tela chak da shen Do not have any aversion or do not have any attachment. So what happened is when you're seeing this kind of experiences going towards uh, darkness or forests or houses or uh, wood, hollow wood or something like that, that is uh, pushing you to go to rebirth. So that time you need to know, now I don't want to rebirth just randomly. I want to rebirth in the right places. So how to do it? Zamling I want to rebirth back to the world, human realm, especially in Tibet or Nepal or some part of Europe they have Dharma or some part of Asia in Dharma, wherever my guru is, I want to reborn where is my guru and their gurus, uh, their disciples are. I want to reborn the area. So Nepal or Bhutan or Sikkim or India, some part of India or some part of US or Europe or Mexico, some specific area where there are Dharma practitioners, uh, practitioners like that. I want to rebirth to that particular place to okay. I want to reborn to the Dharma practitioner parents. So I visualized my parents are Guru Rinpoche and Guru Rinpoche's consort, Ishitojar. And without any chakdan, dangwe lopongla, without any aversion to father or uh, attachment to mother, or aversion to mother, attachment to the father, without any aversion to both parents, I want to rebirth through my devotion and I want to rebirth through my meditative state. Why? When you attach to father and aversion to mother, you become a man. When you have uh, attachment to mommy and uh, an anger to father, that means become mm, boy. So that's why that kind of aversion and this kind of man, woman uh, uh, condition is not good for practitioners. So that's why I don't want to have any aversion like that. I just whatever man, woman, whatever body I would have, have it through my dharma um, rebirth. Samo chugen hojone. I become the vessel of understanding Dharma, and through that body, next life body, I'm going to practice in gain realization. So this is the Guru Rinpoche structure of the first part of part of Dharma uh, Dharmakaya, part of death, and the second is part of uh, the uh, seeing the Buddhas, the, the, huh? the Sambhubakaya. Then the third uh, is the part of experiencing things, now your body and the mind separated. So that time you need to do the offering of small offering, dedicating food for them for 49 days. Then you can ask Lama to pray for them, do poa, different type of pujas. You can do the different chanting. So you can read the Bardo liberation upon this to your parents or people who pass away. Or you can do every day for whole sentient beings. Really doesn't matter. It's a really good everything. So you can do that. Then you can um, ask your way you connect it uh, to people and now you can do it. Or you can look at Samya Institute. We have a Pardo prayers and many uh, students are very much uh, happy with that. So then you can choose this kind of platform or whatever, whoever you want to connect, you, you are connected and you do it for the disease. Now, the last part of that is Guru Rinpoche teach us how to rebirth. So that's why um, you know, like uh, Rinpoche's reincarnations or La Great Lama re reincarnations, nothing amazing to practitioners because we are very familiarized the teaching like this. So uh, Guru Rinpoche teach all the students how to give rebirth back to the practitioner. The great master coming back to rebirth is nothing any um, you know anything amazing. Of course, the differences is. The great masters have memory of what they are, and their vessels are much more vivid. They can actually do much better work, and they have more understanding, or sometimes better than the meditation improvement faster, or they have really great memory of the past. That is the only differences. But 
I don't think anyone can have that kind of capability who can practice well. So you can see that rebirthing to the right family and right places is nothing amazing. After you can hear, we can see this Bardo teaching like this. You can see that Guru Rinpoche teach us how to see, face the death, how to face when you experience the Buddhas and the wrathful and the peaceful Buddhas. When I experiencing my body and my mind is separated and I become completely chaotic experiences, Guru Rinpoche teach us not to be a fear, fear and have a completely faith to Amitabha Buddha and Gurus and then completely focus to rebirth to Amitabha land. Again, that chance is lost it. Then Guru Buddha said, now if you're pushing towards rebirth, how to choose a right rebirth in the right place. So this is, this is the basic teaching of the liberation upon hearing. So you can see that it's very important in the future is a liberation upon wearing takdur, where anybody you see me in the future, when I have in my hands on the Sanjay Sechik, the blue chakra, uh, please you can ask me when I have it and I'm going to, I, I can give to you. Uh, then the blessing pills I have, and Chitabi Chitin Yama Rinpoche have, and other Rinpoches have. So when you meet Rinpoches, you don't forget to ask the blessings, pills, mm-hmm. so you can have hands on all these things beforehand. So I usually give many blessing pills, people and friends, family members and other students to give to animals and all that kind of stuff. So it's very important to keep in mind. You can read this, this, you can supplicate, you can chant mantra, you can do Tonglen compassion practice, you can read this, this one. Mm, then you can ask some monks and other one to practice, read this or any other pujas, you know. So that is your own choice. Some people, they do every day. Uh, they ask some monks to do prayer for 49 days. Some they choose every week uh, to do uh, seven week pujas. Or they, some they do only one week or two weeks or three weeks like that. So the really crucial week is the first week, the second week, the third week is very, very crucial. Then um, after that is very crucial until the seven days. The, the really beginning three week is the, the most effective for the person who pass away. So that is the basic uh, advice that I like to give today. So, um, so what we learn from these Pardo teachings, how significant the teachings of the Dharma, the Buddha, the Guru Rinpoche is so important to practice now. Every experiences that we go through actually is more, is an expression of your mind. How important is, really is, I think is one of the most important, I think this kind of thing. So how important the Vajrayana teachings, the giving us this kind of precisely, some going to have very fast experiences, some going to have a little bit chaotic, but you're going to go through all these experiences. <clears throat> And I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, <clears throat> everybody who, <clears throat> who participate today. Uh, near future, within a month or two, I am going to uh, give uh, a teaching, online teaching again. Uh, just uh, be uh, aware. Uh, I'm going to teach and uh, some specific teachings. I'm thinking on uh, uh, teaching on how to uh, practice correctly mm, uh, on the uh, compassion and bodhicitta practices. So I'm going to more focus on the bodhicitta practice, and uh, that is going to be very crucial for many of us. And uh, so thank you very much, all the participants. Thank you very much for the our Samye um, uh, Institute volunteers and people, all the teamwork and. Uh, Thank you very much, all the translators. And uh, I think you all know, again, uh, who, who is uh, watching me in America, uh, students, you need to be aware that we have Amitabha Poa practice in a, our America Center in New York, after the New York. And actually, we I teach Amitabha breath. Uh, Amitabha breath practice is taught by Guru Rinpoche in the uh, Tuktu Parche the same circle, same belong to the same teaching, because Amitabha breath. 
So it's a very easy and very effective. And then whoever in the other country, in the, uh, Asia, wherever you're watching, be aware that I'm going to teach this Poa Amitabha breath or Poa and the liberation of pounds of healing Sanchi Sejik in the Bali in October. So just keep in mind. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do a question answer a little bit. Then I'm going to uh, do, we do dedication. Okay, Rinpoche La, first question. Uh, when is the best time to perform POA during luminosity bardo stage? Okay, Rinpoche, the first question. Um, when is the best time to perform POA during the luminosity bardo stage? Poa, um, when the person, the breath is called off, like a, it's, it's not like a call death, then you instantly you do a poa. Yeah. Poa yourself, luminous moment of death, you cannot recognize, you can do poa at that time. Or you can do poa in luminosity time. You can do poa in uh, the part of becoming. So you, whichever, whenever you can remember, you can do poa. Mm. Okay. Next question. Dear Rinpoche, how can we skillfully and practically apply and practice recognizing the nature of mind to know that everything is a manifestation of our mind? So how can we skillfully and practically apply the recognizing of the nature of mind? Father John Rinpoche said, first you need to find an authentic teacher. Okay? Then you need to develop your uh, qualities as a, or to become authentic student. Then you receive authentic teachings of the Dzogchen. Then you apply the practice. Then you could have recognition. Without having authentic teacher, without putting yourself in an authentic student, without getting authentic instruction, uh, it's not easy to have uh, to recognition. It's uh, very easy to say, it's easy to recognize, but it's not the point of recognizing, it's the point of how to maintain, how to have decisiveness. That is the more important. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. Rinpoche mentions dissolving the deities into ourselves in the bardo of luminosity. There is still an experience of self and other then. Is it better to instead dissolve ourselves into the deity or is there no difference?
and they have no differences. You can uh, have a deity dissolve to you or you can dissolve to the deity. It's no differences. When we say dissolve to me, it's not dissolving to the ego. Dissolving to nature of my mind. Uh -huh. So that's why when we study, when we practice, very important to understand the nature of my mind is Buddha, nature of my mind is Buddha. That kind of familiarizing is very important. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't matter, like dissolving to you or you dissolving to them. It doesn't matter. Mm. Rinpoche, how do I determine if I have reached a meditative state during my meditation practice? Meditation meaning well, you need to have your your awareness. Your awareness, your awareness, your, your mind, and you sync your awareness, your breath, your your awareness sync with your breath. Being aware of your breath and slowly your mind is sync with your breath. Gentle, sing with your breath, aware of your breath. Slowly your focus is going to be completely sync. Your mind is going to sync and uh, synchronize with your breath, with awareness. And that we call breath meditation. Now, similarly, your mind, you can synchronize, slowly sync with your image of Guru Rinpoche. Visualize Guru Rinpoche and, you know, devotion as a presence, presence of Guru Rinpoche. And you slowly, your mind and synchronize and slowly with the, the Guru Rinpoche. And you're just aware that your mind is now slowly, you know, becoming one with the Guru Rinpoche and synchronize and awareness, maintain the awareness. We call Guru meditation. So the key is not what you're doing. The key is that your mind awareness synchronizing slowly, it takes time synchronizing uh, with the, whichever place you want to put in and synchronize with that and sync, you know, the, like uh, within, within one and with the awareness we call meditation. This particular meditation we call shamatha meditation. Okay, so the question is how I know I'm in the meditative state until you don't have the awareness, you're not going to know. So when you have awareness and you're aware, when your mind is stay still, still with that synchronized with the breath, with the one second, two second, third, three second, four second, without any distraction, that means I'm with the breath for three seconds. And when your mind is a little bit distracted, you can see your, your, your awareness become a little bit more gentle and you forgot, forgot of your split, your split, you know, your, your, your thought arises or your mind is a little bit, your awareness become more dull, you know, then you don't have the meditative state. That's why the key is the being awareness. Keep the mental awareness synchronized with the breath or body or feeling or, Whichever you want, what whichever technique that what whichever object that you're doing or non-object doesn't matter. So that synchronizing awareness is the key. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the next question: um, When my best friends and family members died, I I did not know to read this te this text for forty nine days. Is there any benefit for them to read it now? or on the anniversary of their deaths? Uh, 
I like to suggest that when the anniversary comes, so what you can do is you can offer some butter lamb offering or you want to do some um, support to some charitable act or doing some meditation or reading this uh, liberation upon hearing for all the beings and you, I, I accumulate all these good uh, habits, we call good merits, but good habits. All the, then you dedicate to your family who diseased for 10 years ago. That is very good too. Dedicating things to people who already disease and they already rebirth now. So there's no good directly benefit is not going to be there, but indirectly benefit is you dedicating them to your family disease. Definitely they're going to benefit wherever their birth is. So it's going to I'm going to suggest that way. Thank you. Next question. If I choose to donate my organs after my death, will I be able to use these practices or will it disturb the body mandala? I had their questions before and I thought about it. So I just want to share my opinion. Mm, giving your organs to the other beings are such a great uh, uh, generosity, especially when we do practicing chuk, cutting through. Actually, we're cutting through to give away to all the demons and spirits. Bodhisattva doing breathing exercise, breathe all the negativity in you, and you give all the positivity to all the beings. Now you're doing organ donation to people to have at least life to live. I think it's a really, really good act. And now the question is going to be, I'm going to see all that uh, experiences. Don't worry, you're going to have all the experiences and you're going to have great uh, uh, beneficial. So I think organ donation, I think is not not bad. I think it's good action. It's a bodhisattva action. Thank you. Next question. How can we know if someone has benefited from our reading of these pith instructions? Uh, many people um, is a uh, um, it's very difficult to uh, experience um, like normal people. But some people, for example, you you keep dreaming too many times, and you when you really do the good prayer and dedicating merit or reading this kind of liberation upon hearing, then you not see not rem not coming in your dream means they benefited. Sometimes come to dream because of you missing out. But sometimes their dream comes because they want something for help. So it's very difficult to say which is the which. So that's why I don't want to say, you know, this is the one is the one way. It's that it doesn't. So it really benefit? It does. How do you know? You really need to do your own practice first. Without your own practices, you the sign and the experiences are going to be very hard to explain. And when I explain, it's going to be, become more complicated for you. And you just could ask so many questions, it's unnecessary. So the key is going to be benefit, 100% benefit. Just keep reading. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rinpoche Lai. This is, this is the last question for today. My mother passed away last year, and I can feel her blessings every day in my life. Since she was a serious Buddhist practitioner her whole life, and we did very good puja after she passed, is it possible that she is still protecting us, though she's not there anymore? When they have this uh, Karma Chame, a very famous master who wrote uh, Amitabha's uh, aspiration, who collected from different Amitabha sutras and put it in together. In there, they said that when the, the being who rebirthed to Amitabha land, imagine like me, so after my supplicating to Amitabha, so now I rebirth to Amitabha land in the lotus. So lotus bloom and the flower open up. I see the Amitabha, I receive teaching. Then when I focus my mind to the my family, and actually I can see through my families. So I can I can bless them, I can support them. Any of my family member who die, I can help them to rebuild Amitabha land or like that. So that shows very clearly that your mother have a really good rebirth, Amitabha land or wherever good rebirth, and she's really blessing you and protecting that 100%, I think so, yes. That's why in the Asian culture, you know, Asian culture, what they do is they like to remembering the ancestors, and they like to do every year offerings, and they do prayers for their dedicate foods, dedicate offerings, dedicate things and to the ancestors. And I think it's a really good gesture. It's really healing of the family, reunifying the family, uh, remembering the past. And uh, spiritually, you can do dedication married to the family ancestors. So I think in Asian culture, they do it. I think it's really beautiful. I think it's a really nice gesture too. Yeah. So thank you very much, Jasper. And thank you all the participants and all the translators and all the Sami Institute, um, our people. And uh, thank you very much uh, for this. And I'd like to thank our Guru Mahan Guru Padma Sambhava, thinking of his kindness and all my gurus, of their kindness of teaching us this path and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who are uh, constantly uh, bene bene benefiting beings and blessing all the beings and especially all, all of us. So thank you very much, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Gurus and our lineage masters. With that, we dedicate to all these, all the beings who don't have the Gurus and Bodhisattvas teachers right now, but we dedicate to all beings to have good spiritual teacher and have transformation in their mind and have more happiness in their life, in the future lives. <laughs> ตาคุณเจเจโซดาลุยโยเกวะเตตาตัมเจรอบโตงอเตตัมจิเปจาวะตัมจิเจงอวังคังลาโชตุงอตาเกงเกวิซาวันติกุญจังซัมโบจูเ
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rinpoche, for this profound and very clear and very applicable teaching. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this. And thank you all for joining us and sharing the merit of this beautiful and profound teaching. And again, we would really especially like to thank our incredible translation team, mm -hmm. making it possible for so many people to access and listen to and understand and apply the teachings. So it is Anita for Portuguese, Hervé for French, Marcela for Spanish, Sukanya for Thai, Birat for Nepali, Hung for Vietnamese, Kathy for Chinese, Henry for Indonesian, Arne for German, and Lana, thank you for stepping in uh, also for German, for German, and Tom for Japanese. So this concludes Pajak Rinpoche's teachings on the Bardo. Uh, from all of us at Samye Institute, please stay safe and well. We would like to remind you of the next global online gathering from the Samye Sangha, already on July the 28th at 8 a.m. Kathmandu time. Please join us again for Global Tutu Baje Kunsil Sokum Puja. Registration information will be posted on the Samye Institute website in the coming weeks, so keep your eyes out for that. Thank you. We rejoice in the merit of this auspicious occasion um, from Samye Institute. We wish you all the best in your practice. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. 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 Thank you.